Good afternoon, my YouTube brethren. We're back in the office today. We're trying to get this transom series finished, and I apologize it's been so long. Uh, wife had surgery and just been down and out kind of the last couple of weeks, and uh, getting the garden all started, and it's just been it's been crazy busy. So let's get back on it. We left the transom last time. We had filled in, uh, we had beveled the, the last layer that we put on. We beveled all that out, all the seams, and we had uh, replaced all the that beveled area we had we had made it uh, we had made it flush with fiberglass sheeting and, and if you go back and watch that and, and epoxied all of that in and then we let it dry and cure completely and so we had all of that taken care of we let that cure I believe we left it over for approximately two to three days and it was it was just fine uh, I do want to remind everybody at this point if, if you're if you're needing to get out and to use it at that at that point once you once you put all the components back you've done all your uh, kusa board you've done all of your fiberglass and epoxy mixture on the inside of the transom and you've put the outer hole back on once you get to that point it's strong enough to put your motor on and go it's just not pretty and so everything that we do from here on out uh, you could do better than we did and make it prettier. So we're not overly concerned about how it looks. We're concerned more about uh, the function over the form. But you could take your time. You can make it look flatter. You can make it look glossier. You can, you can do all the things we're going to do even better and make it look uh, even prettier than what we're going to do. So we're, we're definitely after a utilitarian uh, style transom. So that just keep that in mind as we go forward. So what we're going to do at the very first part of this video, I'll just show you a couple of brief clips, is we just come in after that has cured, after that fiberglass uh, molding that, that takes place in those seams, we're just going to come in and we're going to completely uh, wipe and clean all of that with uh, soap and water and acetone, and then we're going to sand it flush. And that's all we're going to do. We're going to start with a grinder uh, to get in and get all of the, the, the big pieces out, and then come back with a small sander and we'll sand it flush. And that's what we'll start with with just a couple of quick videos. I'll show you what we do. This is just an acetone to get all the stuff off. Yep, just a fine clean. I went ahead and I washed it with water. Okay. Scrubbed it good and acetoned it the other day, but all, all that stuff weren't. And that was all before you sanded? That's all before sanded. So all that's pretty self-explanatory. You go in, you make the back of that transom just as flat and as flush as possible. The next step is called fairing the transom and getting it ready for gel coat. So what we do is we go in and we mix the same epoxy that we've been mixing from the, from the very beginning of the video series. And we're going to mix all of that together. That's the West systems that we've been using. Again, you can find all that stuff down in the description below. There's links to it. Uh, feel free to check it out. And then um, we put that on there, and you're going to do just as we did from the beginning. You just brush it on, and then you're going to let it get tacky. Uh, we, wanted, we wanted it to get stickier than we had in the past because we'd had some problems with that. So we actually got out an old blow dryer and just put some heat on it uh, and made it, made it tack up just a little. The way that epoxy works is it, it's not going to harden on you or set unless it has unless it's exposed to heat so if it stays cold uh, the, that two-part epoxy will will never harden or set and so you have once it gets hot enough warm enough uh, it begins to cure and that's kind of the time frame that you're working with if you go back to some of the video stuff at the beginning uh, we'll, we'll, we talk about working with 10 minutes or 15 minutes or 20 minutes uh, because that's how long we have before it sets and cures and uh, is too hard to really work with to complete the fairing of the transom, you come in with the same epoxy mixed with a silica thickener. And so we'll do that, and then we'll get ready to clean that, to prep it, and then the gel coat. We allowed our transom to get sticky, and this is the final product that we're going to put on so we can fair it. And this is epoxy. The regular West systems that we've been using the whole time, as well as 406 and the 407 silica 
what do you call that? Silica filler. Silica filler. How thick do you think, Dad? Quarter of an inch? Eighth of an oh, inch? Oh no, it'll be much less than a quarter. I hope no nothing's more than an eighth. And I think most of it'll be, you know, a sixteenth to to less. But you do want to cover the whole surface. You want to cover the whole surface. And then how long will you let this cure? Be, need to cure. I'm gonna let it cure for a week to make sure my when you when they don't like you to put gel coat over epoxy. Most of the manufacturers of gel coat don't even recommend it, but um, it, it, it's, I think it's it's okay. But you really have to let it cure. Uh, I think that's the key. And then and then prep it, prep it right. It needs to be your 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 epoxy needs to be cleaned with with uh, soap and water to get any of the uh, the wax build up off of it. And then uh, clean it with acetone. And also, also to uh, sand it. So it, it, there's some prep that needs to be happen when you when you put gel coat over epoxy. But I think it, it can be done according to uh, the folks at West System. That's kind of their recommendation. It looks kind of ugly, but at this point, uh, it is now prepped for the, the gel coat. This particular epoxy layering that we just put on will need to set for uh, as, as long as you can, you can stand it. Uh, we let it set for a whole week, and that's part of the reason that this video took so long is letting that particular thing cure. At the end of this, when it's all cured, you come in, you sand it one more time, you make it as smooth as possible, and then you can put on your uh, gel coat. We came in with a, a round sander as well as a flat belt sander, uh, and, and we made it just as flush as possible, and we fared it. That's the, that is the, the term for this, is fairing it. Uh, and then after that, uh, we were able to put on our we were able to put on our gel coat. Got our fairing coat completed. Now we're just cleaning up. We brushed it. We're gonna clean it up with acetone and then next step is gel coat. So the last step now is to place the gel coat on the back of the transom once you've flattened everything off and fared it and then cleaned it again real well. So you come in and, and the gel coat's super simple. You can roll it, you can spray it, you can paint it, whatever you do, and then you come back, you wipe off the wax, and then you, uh, you sand it all down and make it really smooth. At that point, you're treating it like the end result on your bass boat. So if your bass boat has oxidation, you come in, you sand it, and then you can buff it. The cool thing about it is, is the epoxy that we use or excuse me, the gel coat that we used, it, it functions kind of like epoxy. It, 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 will, it will fill in cracks and holes and dings. And so we actually used it in a couple other places on the boat and, and made those places flush. And you can do two or three coats of this if you want to. Uh, it's a really neat process and I, I really enjoyed working with it. It's not quite as difficult as I thought it might be. It would be difficult if you're trying to make, match colors and add in flake and all of that. It'd be a whole nother step, but it's, it's doable for sure. Uh, there's a couple of resources, definitely West Systems and Total Boat. Uh, this is the next and final step of the gel coat application onto the back of the transom. We're going to uh, we're going to mix up eight ounces to begin with. We don't have a clue how much it's going to take to, to cover this. We're going to mix up eight ounces and see how far that goes. And I, I think I don't know. We'll just we'll just have to see. So we got we got our our uh, gel coat with wax, and that's the top coat. Uh, a, a laminating gel coat won't have any wax in it. So uh, this is the this is the the end, the end product of, of the of the coating. Uh, what I understand, you can treat this similar to epoxy. If you want to put another coat on it, you have to de-wax it, uh, warm water, and, and maybe a, a, a little scouring pad, scotch Bright, take the wax off of it, sand it, and then apply another coat on it. But and, and we'll, we'll probably have to do that, but we'll see. So this is a two-part system, just like the epoxy. You've got your gel coat and you've got a hardener. 
And you can find both of these. We got them at Total Boat. Total Boat. And that's out of Jamestown? No, uh, Jamestown is a distributor. Total Boat is a company on their own. But Jamestown does carry some of these Total Boat gel coats and stuff like that. So one teaspoon per eight ounces or two teaspoons for a pint. Yes. And the gel coat and the hardener, how, how much was that together? Do you remember? Uh, Price-wise? Yes. Uh, about $32, if I remember right. And then the final step we did was we opted just to just to paint it on, just like we did everything else. Uh, the gel coat's pretty thin. It was it was thinner than we thought, and so we had quite a bit of drip and run. Something we should have done from the beginning of all of this is to make sure we have some sort of drip tarp or something put down. Uh, we got a lot of epoxy on our concrete and blah blah blah. So just a, a word to the to the wise there. Make sure you put something down. The gel coat went on fine, and it took a little bit to dry and to cure. So you got plenty of working time. Uh, we made the transom as flat as possible. Uh, we fared it and, and, and brushed this all on, and it was really enjoyable, this kind of last step. What we'll do from here is we'll actually come straight back um, and do, we're gonna, we're gonna let it cure, come back, we'll, we'll clean it off real good, and we're gonna do one more coat um, of, this, of this gel coat. And then we're gonna come back and we'll sand it, and we'll make it look uh, as pretty as we possibly can. But that's really it. Uh, very simple and uh, we'll see how the end result is but um, we're very impressed with how easy this this was to apply and there we have six parts to get to the end of the transom now there's there's one more step that we got to do a couple more steps actually we're, we, we're going to apply that extra coat and then we'll come back in and we'll show you we'll, we're going to buff it all out we're going to sand it make it real smooth and pretty uh, and then put um, polish on there as well as wax and then we'll do the whole boat we'll, we'll, we'll do something else to kind of end cap it but really at this point you're kind of finished. You can make this as pretty as you want. Like I said, you can go in, you can take this gel coat, you can add you can add color to it, uh, you, you can make it match, you can add flake, there's all kinds of things that you can do. Uh, and, and a lot of things that better YouTubers uh, have done. And so there's a lot of instruction out there. Uh, again, like I said from the very beginning, the, the key for this whole thing for me was just getting in there and doing it. It, it sounds daunting, it looks daunting, and, and, and people throw out numbers like, oh, it's gonna cost you two, three, five thousand dollars to get your transom replaced and that may be true uh, but but it's really not too big of a deal uh, to do it yourself especially if you're not overly concerned about the back of the transom looking pristine. Um, we didn't take the time to make it look absolutely perfect. You can, but we didn't take the time to do that. So um, if you're going to do this yourself, just just go back and make sure all the little things, uh, making it as, as, as flush as pop possible from the very beginning all the way to the end, making sure that's done, letting your epoxy set long enough for your fiberglass to stick. And there's so many things that, that we're going to do differently on the, uh, the yellow boat, the boat from hell. We're going to actually tear into that uh, next week. So You'll get to see all this stuff again on the yellow boat. We're going to take it completely apart. We're going to take the top cap off and redo all the stringers and flip that thing over and, and resurface the hole. I mean, we're going to do a whole bunch to it. So I'm excited about that. This has given me a lot of confidence going into uh, that total boat redo because, uh, like I said, it's just not quite as bad as we thought it was going to be. So this is part six. Uh, we're just about done. There will be one more part. And then we might do a part eight coming in and just talking about the things we could have, should have done differently going into the next next boat. So that might be fun. We might do that. Um, and then we'll also put the motor back on and let you see the final results. So thanks for sticking with us. Again, I apologize for the, for the gap uh, in videos. Uh, we'll get that remedied this coming week and uh, invite you along as we finish this project. God bless y'all. Have a great safe afternoon. We'll catch you next time.